I don't know what's awesome, this is my level 1 to 99 smithing guide sponsored by Smoking Dice. In this video, we'll tell you how to train smithing very efficiently all the way to level 99. Okay, so let's start with the beginning, which is the same for all the methods. So from level 1 to 15, you will train by smelting runs bar, and then after that, iron bar until level 30. Another option is to do the free to play quest, the Night Sword, that will make you get level 29 instantly after completing the quest. Okay, so let's start with the slow but good money method. So from level 30 to 35, you will train by making steel bars. And then after that, from level 35 to 85, you will make cannonballs, which are the best way to make money while training smithing. However, like I will explain later in the video, I only recommend to make cannonballs if you have done the Mega Mauritiana tasks. Otherwise, it doesn't worth it. So if you haven't done the quest, then simply continue with steel bar all the way to level 85, and then at level 85, all the way to 99, you can make wood bars, which are better experience than cannonballs, and they also give really good GP, 6.3 GP per experience. Okay, so now let's talk about the medium speed and cash methods. So from level 30 to 40, you will train by using Iron Ingot 3, which are amazing experience per hour, but very expensive. So that's why I recommend at level 40 to start making gold bars, which are a little bit less experience, but they are way cheaper. So do gold bars all the way to level 88, and at level 88 until 99, you will make Adam and Plate Buddies with either a Sacred Armor or without a Sacred Armor. For those who don't know, a Sacred Armor is a reward from the Stealing Creation minigame, but I will explain that later in the video and compare the two methods together. And finally, the fastest but very expensive methods, only for those who have a lot of money. So the fastest way to train smithing is by using Ingot 3. So first of all, Iron, then Steel, Matron, and Adamant Ingot 3. So you can continue to train that way all the way to level 99, if you want to train away from keyboard, but if you want the fastest experience, then you will have to make Mitril Ceremonial Sword and Adamant Ceremonial Swords, which need a lot of concentration. So using all those methods, you can get level 99 smithing in 50 hours, so it's very fast, but it will cost you around 160 million G. Okay, so if you remember well, from level 1 to 15, you will train by smelting bronze bars. So in order to make a bronze bar, you will need copper ore and tin ore. And the experience you will get per hour is around 8.2k experience per hour. After that, from level 15 to 30, you will train by making iron bar. So if you make them, I highly recommend to use a ring of fortune, because usually you can fail to make an iron bar, and you will lose the ore, but if you have a ring of fortune, then it won't happen, so you get maximum GP and maximum experience per hour. Then after that, from level 30 to 45, you will train by making steel bar. So for each steel bar you want to make, you will need 1 iron and 2 coal. So the experience you will get per hour is exactly the same than the iron bar, however you will make more GP per experience and GP per hour. For those who are using the medium speed and cash method, then you will have to make gold bar from level 40 to 88. So the experience you can expect to get is around 80k experience per hour, but it's only if you have done the quest Family Crest to have the goldsmith gauntlet, like I will explain later. If you don't have done the quest, then you won't get any good experience, and it doesn't worth making gold bars. So only use this method if you have done the quest Family Crest and are using the gauntlets. And finally, the rune bars from level 85 to 99 if you're not using cannonballs. So the amount of rune bars you will be able to make per hour really depends on your setup that I will show later. And the experience you will get is around 33k experience per hour. When smelting bars, it's very important to use smelting urns because they will give 20% more experience in smithing. So I highly recommend to use them. In order to use them, it's very simple. You buy the urn unfinished on the granite exchange, and then you simply add a fire room. So depending on the urn you will buy, you will be able to store more resources and get more experience. Those are the inventories I recommend to bring for bronze, iron, and gold bars. As you can see, don't bring any urns for the gold bars because it doesn't work. And about the iron setup, if you have access to the strong urn, then simply bring one of them, it's enough. Those are the inventory you will need for steel and rune bars. So at the left, you will see without a coal bag, and at the right, with a coal bag. So for those who don't know, it's a dungeon ring reward that can hold up to 27 Coal. So I highly recommend to use it if you can have access to it. 
And also don't forget that you can get, use a beast of burden that will also help you increase the amount of bars you can make per hour. And about making rune bars with a cold bag, I don't really recommend to bring an urn because you won't be able to make 6 bar, only 5. Okay, so for the equipment, you will wear Varrock Armor if you have it, because it will increase the amount of bar you can smell per hour at the edge of furnace. Um, for the gold smelting, you will want to wear the gold smithing gauntlet, because it will increase by a lot the amount of experience you will get. And if you're smelting iron, then you will want to wear a ring of forging. The best place to make bars is inside the Edgeville Furnace, but to access this location, you'll have to do the Varrock Easy Tasks. However, if you haven't done the Varrock Easy Task, then I recommend to go to the Alcarid Furnace. Okay, so smelting bar is very easy, so first of all, we'll draw the ores you will need, then go to the furnace, click on it, select the bar you want to make, and that's pretty much it. All you have to do is wait until all your ores are converted to bar, and it's away from keyboard. Okay, so when it's done, simply go to the bank and repeat. Now we'll talk more about advanced smelting technique with a cold bag and a beast of burden. So with the beast of burden, don't forget to select the left option to interact. Okay, so to fill the coal bag, simply use a coal on it. Then when you want to fill the piece of burden, left click on the summoning button to select interact and press 2 and store the coal into the piece of burden. Then withdraw, for example, rune bars, uh, rune ores I meant, and coal and then simply go to the furnace, select all and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and you will run, when you will run out of coal, simply select the take bob option so you get the coal from your beast of burden without interrupting smelting so that's the best way to smelt room bars okay so now let's talk about cannonballs so basically you will turn one steel bar into four cannonballs you will train that play from level 35 to 99 if you want to maximize the amount of cash you will make or you can stop at level 85 and start making room bars to maximize your experience while still making cash. So I really recommend to have done the medium task Mauritiana because it will double the amount of experience we'll get per hour and double the amount of cash we'll make also per hour. So if you don't have done those tasks, then I don't recommend to use cannonballs. Those are the items you will need while making cannonballs. So first of all, the full inventory of steel bars. In your equipment, you want to have your Mauritania legs, two or plus. And finally, in your tool bed, a Namo mold. The place where you will make the cannonballs need to be the port plasmatic, otherwise you won't get the bonus from your legs. And the fastest way to get there is to use a Necto field. The first thing you want to do is withdraw a full inventory of steel bars and then go to the furnace right here, use your steel bar on the furnace and then select the option make cannonballs. And that's it. You simply wait until all your steel bars are converted to cannonballs. Then you simply go back to the bank, drop all the cannonballs, withdraw more steel bars and repeat. So it's very easy and away from keyboard. Now I'll talk about burial armor, which are a part of the artisan workshop. So the first thing you will make is iron ingot 3. So basically you will turn 12 iron ore into an iron ingot. And with this ingot you will make a normal. We'll explain the wool processes later in the video. So we'll train that way from level 30 to 45. And you will get amazing experience per hour. After that, you will make steel ingot 3 that will be turned into armor. So you will train that way from level 45 to 60. After that, you will use mitral ingot tree. So to make one, you will need 6 mitral ores and 24 coal, so it's very expensive. And finally, the adamant ingot tree, which is the fastest way to train smithing away from keyboard. You can get up to 240k experience per hour. In order to go to the place where the burial armor take place, so the artisan workshop, you will teleport to Falador or use the skill necklace to the mining dial. Okay, so now I will talk about making burial armor. So you will need to use your melted ores on the smelter and then use the smelter to withdraw in the tree. After that, you will need to use the anvil to make the right armor. So in the top of the screen, you will see the current instruction, for example, gauntlet. So your goal is to make gauntlet to, be, to get the maximum experience. Once all your inventory is full of armor, simply use the shoot to drop all the armor automatically, then withdraw more in God and repeat. So don't forget that you can make rewards that will give you up to 5% more experience while making burial armors. 
The place where you will make the burial or more is in the east part of the artisan workshop and to buy the reward you will go underground. So every time you will get 10k experience inside the artisan workshop you will get 1% respect and with the respect you can make, buy the rewards that will give you more experience. In your inventory the only thing you will want to have is knotted ore, so all of them and in your tool belt an armor. The sacred armor does work with the burial armor but I don't really recommend to use it because if you want to save cash, then don't use burial armors, they are way too expensive. First of all, go to the east part of the art sand workshop and then use all the knotted ores on the smelter, so like I'm just doing. So like that, use your coal and then use your adamanted ores. After that, you will want to use a withdraw option from the smelter, select ingot tree and then select the one you want, for example, adamant ingot tree. So now you have a full inventory of ingot. Now you'll want to use the anvil. So as you can see in the top of the screen, there is a current instruction, for example, gauntlets. So your goal is to select the gauntlet option, so you will get a 10% bonus experience. So the, I recommend to use what the instruction says. After a while, it will change. For example, now it's gauntlet, but now the guy said make chest plate. So now if I don't make chest plate, for example, I continue with gauntlet, I will only get uh, regular experience so without the 10% bonus so I recommend to switch every time it's needed of course you can simply don't care about the current instruction and be away from keyboard for your wall inventory which is really really good to be away from keyboard so simply keep doing what the current instruction says um, until your inventory is full of armor as you can see it's quite slow to make a normal but usually you can make around seven to eight of them every time the instructions switch. When your inventory is full, simply use the shoot right here and it will drop all the armor, but you will still keep the ingot and click on the smelter and withdraw more ingots and repeat. From level 88 to 99, you can train with the famous Adam and Plate Buddies. So the amount of experience you can get per hour is 220k and it only costs 6 GP per experience. If you want to make Adam and Plate Buddies, then I really, really recommend to use the Stroll of Efficiency. It's a dungeon ring reward and it will make you save millions of GP from level 88 to 99. Another option is to use sacred armors to make adamant plate bodies. So for those who don't know, it's a uh, stealing creation reward that will double the amount of experience you will get in smithing for a 32k bonus experience. So it's really good and you can get 4 to 9 tools per hour at the stealing creation mini game. So the amount of experience you can expect with the tool, including the time to get the tools, it's around 183k experience per hour, so a little bit lower than the experience without the tool, but it will have the amount of GP you will need, so it's only 3.2 in paper experience. So I only recommend to use the sacred armor if your time is worth less than 3.5 million GPs. So for most people actually. Okay, so now let's talk about the items you will need. So a full inventory of adamant bars and a beast of burden filled with adamant bars too. Also don't forget to bring an armor and your Avarak armor 2 or plus if you can use it, it will increase the amount of plate bodies you will be able to make per hour. The best place to make play buddies is at the Varrock Anvil and the fastest way to get there is to use a Varrock Teleport. Ok so the first thing you want to do is change your left click option of your familiar to interact, it's very important. After that you want to withdraw full inventory of adamant bars, then left click on your summoning logo, then press the 2 button to use the store option and put all the adamant bar inside your familiar. Then bank once again, withdraw another full inventory of adamant bars, then click on the anvil which is very close to a bank. Now you want to use the make X option, it's very important, otherwise your character won't take into account the bars you have inside your beast of burden so it will stop making bars. So simply enter 99 and then as soon as you can use the take bob option of your familiar to withdraw bars and never stop smithing the plate bodies. So as you can see it's very efficient and you can make a lot of plate bodies per hour. So now when you don't have any bars left, simply click on the bank once again and drop all the plate bodies you have inside your inventory or simply use your option to drop all your inventory. Left click on your summoning logo, press 2, store more bars, 
use the bank option, withdraw more bars, and then click on the anvil and repeat with the make X option. And now let's talk about the ceremonial swords, which are the best experience of the game, and they don't even cost a lot, only 8.7 GP per experience for 250k experience per hour. However, to get that amount of experience, you will need a lot of concentration and training. From level 85 to 99, if you want the maximum experience, then you can make adamant ceremonial swords for 316k experience per hour, which is the best experience of the game and it will only cost you 11 GP per experience, which is kinda decent. Making ceremonial sword is very complex, so I won't explain it in this video, but I've already done another full ceremonial sword guide showing you all the steps to make one and get maximum experience, so if you want to watch my guide, simply click the annotation on the screen. And finally, the super eating method. Basically, it's a spell at level 43 magic that will turn a ore into a bar. So what's great about this method is that you can make more bars per hour than a, a regular furnace, and you even get magic experience. However, there's one downside. You will need to use a nature room. So you will lose a little bit of money or make less money. So I don't really recommend this method because the main point of making bars is to get money, and with super eating, you will get less money. However, I highly recommend to use the super eating method if you're mining at the LRC cave, the concentrated gold. So you can get mining, magic, and smithing experience, so that's great. But if you only want to make bars at the bank, then I don't really recommend it. If you want a full guide about mining and super eating at the same time, then simply click the annotation on the screen. If you want to know what is the most efficient method for you to train smithing, then simply click the link in the description, then select the smithing logo. Now in this calculator, you will see the level of the method I showed in this video, and even more, with all the GP per experience and the experience per hour. All the GP rates are updated every day automatically by RuneScape Wikia, so it's never outdated. So now you can also move down to my dynamic calculator. So basically, you will have to enter the amount of cash you can make per hour with the best money making ways. Or you can see it that way, how much do you have to pay you to stay idle for one hour. So for example, 1 million GP. So by pressing submit, you will create a new calculator that will show the, the time to get the money with the method you, for each method and the time to get the experience for the total time. So your goal is to find the method with the least total time. So for example, bronze bar are run good at all, it's 111 hours to get 1 million experience. So you can scroll down and find the method which is the most efficient for you, depending on the amount of cash you can make per hour. For example, gold bar are very decent, adamant in the tree with the selling creation tool are also very good. And um, yeah, you can also change the amount of cash you can make per hour for a green pole. 500k GP per, uh, per hour, and it will change the calculator. So now, for example, if you check, the most efficient way to train would be cannonballs now, because your time is worth less, and if a method makes more cash, then it's more efficient to make it.